you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Zeller, for being here today and participating in what may not be the most watched hearing of the day, uh, but certainly one of the more important ones. Uh, let me say at the outset, thanks to the chairman uh, for the focus on this issue and the cooperative spirit, which for the most part we've been able to maintain on this issue, even in today's polarized environment, uh, in having solutions-oriented discussion on this issue. I know that we're especially united in our goal to end teen vaping. This is an epidemic that's uniquely troubling because it's caused harm in two ways, uh, both fostering nicotine dependency in youth and also the onset of increasingly fatal lung injury. As a father, I can only imagine the agonizing realization of understanding that your child has become addicted to something they had no idea was even harmful or the pain of the devastating loss of losing a child or a loved one. My sincere condolences to those who've lost loved ones to this illness. Over the last few months, it's become obvious that something's making users of vaping products sick. Uh, when we think of the vaping epidemic, it's important to recognize that there's two tracks of concern that each need attention and required a tailored solution. There's the teen vaping epidemic that has enveloped as many as 20% of our nation's teenagers. And then there's the issue of lung damage that, according to the CDC, has tragically led to the deaths thus far of 47 people in 25 states and the District of Columbia, as well as 2,290 uh, who've fallen ill to vape-related lung injury. This aspect of the issue has affected all ages. Of those hospitalized, 15% were under age 18. 38% were 18 to 24, 24% 25 to 34, and 23% were 35 years and older. This has been a complex issue uh, because while it's clear that vaping products are hooking young people on nicotine, it appears that tainted black market products seem likely to be causing much of the lung injury. Uh, some of the challenges in dealing with these issues, of course, have been the rapidly developing nature of this epidemic the lack of reliable data that definitively points to clear causes, counterfeit products that blur the focus in understanding the origin of tainted products, untraceable supply lines, particularly within the black market, the lack of effective enforcement, and of course the challenge we as face as legislators in protecting the public from harm while protecting their individual liberties. Thankfully, we've had some breakthrough in findings over the last few weeks that bring some understanding to what is causing lung injury. In the last update from CDC, vitamin E acetate has been identified as a chemical of concern among people who've gotten sick from vaping. THC has been present in most of the recent samples tested. Vitamin E acetate has been used as an additive, most notably as a thickening agent in THC e-cigarette products. These findings serve to suggest that THC-containing e-cigarette products from non-regulated sources are the most likely culprit for the recent outbreak of lung injury. News outlets, including the Associated Press and Wall Street Journal, have reported on the availability and pervasive nature of vaping products that are tainted by bad actors. The Wall Street Journal reports that there's a large market for illegal and counterfeit vaping products online. These products are often made by bad actors to resemble those from legitimate manufacturers, but instead contain additives like pesticides. The CDC has warned users not to buy any vaping products off the street or online, and I'm hopeful that the FDA and others in public health entities at the federal and state levels can continue broadening our understanding of these recent cases of pulmonary illness so that it can be addressed appropriately. Additionally, I'd like to spend time today on this hearing discussing on any progress the FDA may, has made on curbing youth e-cigarette use. I do believe that the focus on this issue in this committee has helped to bring awareness not just to the misconceptions many youth have had towards the health dangers associated with vaping, but also to the public safety issues that remain in the quagmire of the vaping product supply chain. Lastly, this committee considers solutions to those serious problems I do hope will be appropriately balanced in protecting the public, especially our teens, while protecting the rights of consumers who still may find that vaping is a less damaging alternative to traditional smoking. And before closing, I'd like to thank you, Mr. Zeller, for your testimony and being here today. And uh, as always, I'm uh, grateful for the, the committee and, and the chair and us being able to work together on this issue. Thank you, Chairman. I, I yield back.